everyone! Welcome to episode 34 of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. Welcome back to the podcast this week. Thanks so much for joining me again. I'm really happy to be here chatting with you. And if this is your first time viewing the podcast, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. This is a podcast mostly about knitting and spinning and of course, all the yarn and fiber that goes along with those hobbies. I am coming to you today from central Indiana where it is very cold. I think I say that every week. It is uh, 11 degrees as I record right now, and it's the beginning of March. This is about 10 or 11 or maybe 12 degrees below zero Celsius. It's really cold. But the funny thing is about Indiana, and I didn't realize this, of course, because I'd never lived here before, but when it's really cold, it actually is sunny. So the days that it's 30, 40, it's always gray, it seems like. And then when it is really cold, like right now, it's sunny. So <laughs> I really shouldn't complain too much because it's so nice to see the sun. It's really nice to see the sun. But I have a few new projects this week and I have one finished object actually that I don't have with me. So I might as well tell you about that now and I'll insert a picture. I actually knit up a newy, super quick chunky beanie for a close friend of our family's and it was her birthday and I wanted to make her something special. And since it's cold, I can just gift hand knit still. It's so great. <laughs> but uh, I used a skein of my yarn, pineapple yarn, on the Nui Bulky Base, which is a single ply, bulky weight yarn. Uh, I knit it in the colorway Coastal Fog, which some of you may remember I knit my one of my son's sweaters from. It's a really pretty, uh, kind of a gender neutral blue gray color. It's really has many layers, it has some really neat nuanced color. And I topped it off with a palm from, I knew I would forget the shop name. And so I actually made show notes before recording. I know, isn't that crazy doing a podcast when I actually have notes? <laughs> it is by Threadhead Knit Co. I actually purchased it on Etsy. They have a website. I think it's threadheadknits.com. I will put all details below as I usually do. And the palm was in the color platinum and it was a medium sized five inch, which is, I have found an awesome size. It is kind of oversized, but not too obnoxious. <laughs> so if you like fur palms, um, these were really high quality. I've used them in other projects and I've, I was really happy with the quality. So, um, yeah, it was really great. The pattern, I should mention, is the Nui Chunky Beanie. It's free on Ravelry. I wrote it to accompany my Nui Bulky Base, and it's just a really fun one skein project. You can finish a hat in just a few hours. It fits a variety of head sizes, and it's so great for last minute projects. So uh, check it out if you want. And uh, yeah, I wish I had it in person to show you because it was a really, really cute hat and my gift recipient loved it. So that's what counts, of course. And yeah, it was really fun to kind of get a project on and off the needles quickly because I love those fast projects. <laughs> but I think that's all I had. Nope, I had one more finished object. I'm gonna have to insert another picture because I don't have them. They are the Tropicomi socks that I knit up for one of my daughters. She has worn the heck out of them ever since I made them. And I don't think that you guys wanna see dirty socks. So I'm just not going to show them. I'll show a pretty picture instead. <laughs> I used uh, my yarn, pineapple yarn in the colorway Tropicomi. It was a sock set that was available uh, about a month ago in my shop. And it was just, a, I love that colorway so much. And so many of you have messaged me, asked me if I was going to bring it back when I reopen the shop. And I absolutely will. It will be 
definitely one of the first colorways I dye. Um, so it's just a really beautiful, beautiful, warm, you know, lots of warm colors, little pops of neon with that accompanying aqua is just so pretty. Lots of speckles, of course, too. So my daughter loved them, but they really were quite snug on her feet. I think that her feet have grown since the last time I made socks for her, which was at Christmas. So not that long ago, but um, I'm going to have to go up from 56 stitches around up to 60 for her and uh, I think increase the length as well. So crazy how fast they grow. But she loved them. She definitely was not going to give them to her younger sister. <laughs> she was going to wear them whether they fit her or not, which I thought was really funny. And um, so, yeah, on to the next kid for socks. But I cast on a new project. And these are actually socks for me, which is unheard of. I, I don't knit socks for myself. Uh, number one, I don't wear socks that often unless I'm wearing sneakers, I guess, or just around the house, but even then I have slippers, so. Um, but this, I don't know, I just couldn't really resist, and the, I mean, as often as I knit, I only have maybe two or three pairs of socks for myself, which is so funny, and two of those are shorty socks. <laughs> And so the only pair of socks that I've knit for myself that are, you know, a regular length sock um, have a giant hole in them. They were a test, I knit them from a test skein. Um, it was yarn um, on a base and a, I guess a mill that I had not used and I'm actually not using. It was just kind of a test, a sample skein. And uh, so I knit a pair of socks for myself and I'm really glad that I didn't use the yarn because it is, it totally wore through the ball of the foot, which is crazy. I don't, you know, I'm probably not going to keep them. They have worn so much. The, the whole sole of the foot is so worn that I don't think that I can salvage it, which is really sad because I thought they were cute, but that's okay. I can make socks for myself like these. Aren't these so fun? This colorway is just super, super fun. It is uh, called Sham Rockin' by Curvy Werby. And then the toes are my Midas colorway on my Lonnie sock base. You guys, I was so excited to find a yarn that was in stock for St. Patrick's Day because... Um, a lot of these socks are, of the self-striping, I guess, are dyed to order. And so I am not a, I just didn't have the time to like map out my St. Patrick's Day yarn, I guess. <laughs> so I was really excited to find them because they're so pretty and have these, you know, beautiful neon green stripes, but then as well as these other, you know, the dark green, and then this kind of, it's almost like a pale olive green. It has, br definitely has some brown undertones. And I think the Midas, this, you know, beautiful kind of gold, uh, yeah, like a gold tonal, just looks so pretty with it. I think it really looks awesome. So I just cast these on, not even, no, not even a week ago. And they're just flying off my needles. I'm having so much fun with them. It is definitely exciting that I'm making a pair of socks for myself, <laughs> but I still have quite a bit of the yarn cake left, and um, yeah, I'm knitting these two at a time, as you can tell. Magic Loop, two at a time. These are Addy Rockets, um, US Zero, which is a two millimeter, and you know, why did I decide to go two at a time? I don't know. I guess I haven't done it in a while, and so I figured, why not? I'll just go two at a time. Um, and then, of course, you're using two strands of yarn at once. And I wasn't really aiming to get the stripes perfect, so they were a symmetrical pair of socks, which is good because two at a time, as I 
cast on and started remembering when you are taking a strand of yarn from outside the cake and then also inside the cake, as I'm doing right here, what happens is your order of stripes, uh, one is going forwards and one's going backwards. So um, as you can see here, it's you know white, neon green, olive, and then dark green. On this one, it's dark green, olive, neon, and white. It goes the opposite way. So just a little tip, I'm sure many of you already know this, but if you're going to do two at a time, taking uh, taking the yarn from inside and outside the cake, it's going to be opposite stripes, <laughs> which is fine because I wasn't looking I wasn't looking to make them matching anyway. And um, yeah, so this has been really fun, and I'm sure by next week's podcast I will be finished with them. So looking forward to wearing them. It has been so cold just I mean I'm actually wearing I should actually talk about what I'm wearing today I am wearing my throwback cardigan this is a this is called the pattern is called the throwback by Andrea Mowry but I decided to steep mine and make it into a cardigan so I was happy I did that the main color is profound by pineapple yarn the contrasting colors are just a mix <laughs> And I've talked about this on previous pod podcasts, but this is pineapple yarn. I believe it was Glint of Dawn and it's a gray and it actually has just a little bit of pink undertones, which you can see sometimes. Um, this orange was a Malabrigo single ply in glazed carrot, maybe. I know it's something carrot. And then this is actually a sport weight yarn that I held double, a non superwash. And this is in my color uh, pineapple yarn in heliotrope. And I used this for a different color work sweater that I had previously done. So um, I kind of have all different kinds of bases and superwash and non superwash, um, you know, single ply and just kind of a um, mixed variety of yarns in the color work in this sweater but it has worked really well. The steaking went well. And um, I really like the yoke around the shoulders because I tend to have, a, I'm a little on the narrow shoulder side. And so it's really flattering for me to have this yoke. But anyway, fits really great and it's warm. That was the whole point of, of this is it's warm. <laughs> Let me show you what else I've been working on this week. I'm continuing to work on my Lune shawl and it's going great. I'm actually to the midpoint of the shawl, so that's exciting. I think last time I showed you the shawl, maybe I was to here, maybe. I can't really remember. But I have knit um, all the way to the midpoint. The midpoint will have this little stripe and then a little, I think a couple rows that look like this, I guess. And then what will happen is there will be decreasing and I'm assuming, and I say assuming because I never read ahead on patterns, <laughs> but I think it will be a mirror image of this piece. So this will make up the top of the shawl and I think it might be this way, I don't know. It basically is a long wide triangle <laughs> and then the bottom has a big mosaic piece with these two colors so I have really enjoyed this shawl quite a bit it's a you know it's a departure from a lot of shawls that are just garter stitch or you know, there's a lot of garter stitch shawls out there. This has a really pretty pattern that is not complicated at all. It, it, it doesn't, it's not fast, but it's not complicated. And then this really fun mosaic knit, which again is not complicated, super fun. And I am, let's see, what am I knitting this with? I know it's a size uh, size smaller than the recommended needle size. 
It is a US 4, which is a, let me see if I can see it in millimeters. It's kind of rubbed off. Three and a half millimeter. I'm using my Addy interchangeables with that because they are really fast. <laughs> very slippery needles, very fast. And um, the yarn I'm using for this is actually Knit Picks in their palette base. It's a non-superwash wool, and I think it feels really nice. I've really enjoyed working with it, and I would definitely use it for other projects because it has, I've really, it's an enjoyable yarn. I'm using the colors, I believe they are Finley Heather, and maybe navy and cream. So I think this is just so much fun. Really, really enjoying it. And so I am several more weeks out on this. Quite a bit. So I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing on that and someday I'll have a shawl. <laughs> and then it'll probably be 80 degrees. That's all right. But I don't have any finished spinning projects for you this week. Normally I do. I had been going on a kind of a skein a week kick and um, which was great because I love finishing projects. <laughs> but I decided with this yarn or this fiber, I showed you this last week, I believe with my acquisitions. This is from Classy Squid Fiber Co. Um, not just merino in the colorway jelly bean. That little sticker is from one of my kids. And it's um, the fiber is called South Down. And I had a comment um, last week on the podcast recommending another podcast. And of course, I can't remember, so go to my comments if you're interested from last week, last podcast. But she had recommended a spinning podcast where they talked all about South Down and what it is. It's a sheep. I know it's a sheep, but I have never heard of it. And, um, but that is what I have been spinning. I haven't split the fiber at all. I've actually just been spinning right off the top. So that's where I'm at right now. And I have, I'm coming up to a fun part. I always get really excited when I have these <laughs> with the colored parts, but isn't that so pretty? I love it so much. It is super wooly. It's very wooly. It has so much texture. It almost is a little, I don't know the technical terms. I would want to say almost like a little crimpy. I have no idea if that is a term or not, or if that's even, if it is a term, I don't know if it's appropriate. <laughs> but it just has a lot of texture. It's not rough, but it has um, just a really, really beautiful waviness to it. And maybe this is normal for fiber that has a higher micron count, but when I break the strand and then I go to attach it again, it doesn't grip on quickly to the strand of yarn. And I would think something like this that maybe is a higher micron count or that is crimpier would just grasp right away, you know, catch right away to the spinning of the ply that you're trying to reattach. I don't know if that makes sense, but it doesn't, which is funny. And um, I don't know why. It's very enjoyable spinning though. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. And uh, so let me tell you my plans. Do you love how I just took the flyer right off my wheel? Because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to take the fiber out of the orifice and then have to reattach it. I think it's a little lazy, but whatever, it works. So my plans for this are to do a chain ply. Um, I thought about doing a three ply, which would have been my first choice because with this yarn, I'd initially thought it would be fun to do a pair of hand spun socks. 
you know guys as i'm going along i just don't think this is going to be thin enough for socks i mean you can make socks of any thickness i suppose but i don't know it might still be a pair of thicker weight socks which would be fine but i really wanted to do a three ply first because if i do something hard wearing like socks i want to have something with a higher ply count i I don't see why you couldn't make socks in a two ply, but if you have more plies, it will just wear better. So I think that's the reasoning behind that. And so I wanted to do a three ply, obviously for the hard wearing factor, but then secondly, so I would have all these colors kind of mixed together and like a really great barber pulling effect. The problem is, is that I only have three bobbins and with a three ply, you're going to have three full bobbins and you need an extra one for the finished yarn to be on. So you need four total. So I just decided to go with a chain ply. This is going to make a, from my understanding, I've never done a full, I guess a full project with chain plying, but from my understanding, it will end up being like this so we'll, there will be almost self striping I guess so there will be a stripe of purple and then the yellow and then uh, quite a bit of the green so that's not really the effect I wanted but I think that I have always wanted to try chain plying and like I said last week on the podcast I always take the leftover ply after plying, if there's a little bit left over, I always just chain ply straight on, just keep going, but with a chain ply to practice. And I love doing it. So I've had a little bit of practice just with other projects. But yeah, I just really wanted that barber pulling effect of three different plies of yarn, but that's okay. I am really, as much as I really love the effect of two ply yarn, I love the barber pulling effect. That to me is just, I love that mix of colors. It's so pretty, it, it is so pretty. But I don't wanna get stuck in a rut either. I do want to challenge myself and also enjoy it at the same time. So yeah, that's kind of what I figured I would do. And I always say too, like don't, like use your good yarn, use your good fiber and practice because there's always going to be more to purchase, right? Um, but sometimes a color like this, I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna find this again. <laughs> I really, really like this. And I've said that with other yarns and other fibers. But you know what? There's always a new yarn, there's always a new fiber, so. I do really love this color so much and it has been fun to spin. I think I have, I think I'm maybe halfway done with this. So I've just been trying to do a little bit every day and work on that. And let's see, what else do I have to show you? Oh, I used my blending board this weekend. So let me show you what I made. So I had talked to you about my Paradise Fibers Fiber of the Month Club box and how I just really haven't used a lot of the fiber from it. So I have made a concerted effort to um, brainstorm, use some of the fibers, dye the ones that maybe are a little more neutral and aren't really my style. And so I actually worked on that this weekend. The first... Uh, the first project I did were these Rolex. And the main fiber is a Manx Lockton. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that correctly. I think it's a rare breed of sheep. And it was a natural, uh, natural brown color. Let me see if I have I don't know if I have any of the Rolags that have just a bit of that brown. I don't see any, but they were brown or the wool was brown and I actually dyed it a beautiful red, which turned out to be a burgundy red. 
and I added, as you can see, some of these pink bits. These, this is a recycled sari silk top. And I received uh, the Manx locked in and then also the Sari Silk in different Paradise Fiber boxes. So that was kind of fun to uh, mix those up. I also added, if you look closely, some of the lighter parts. That was kind of a light neon pink top that I had dyed. And then I also added just a little bit of yellow. And that was from a top that I dyed as well. And I think this is, I am not sure what it is, what wool. I know one might be just a superwash merino. I can't remember what the other one was. Oh well, it's fine. I'm moderately happy with these. Um, I think the red is really pretty. It's almost a, you know, it really turned out to be kind of a cherry red, which I think is fun. I would probably like it more if I had used a, if I'd added some more wool in it, kind of like this color or like a deeper pink. Oh, like this color would have been really, really pretty. Kind of to um, make the sari silk pop a little more. Uh, I really liked that pink with the red. So it's okay. I'm not thrilled about the yellow <laughs> in it. <laughs> I just started grabbing some things and trying it out and thought, eh, why not? You know, um, it's okay. It's, you know, I, I need fiber to just play around with and um, these roll eggs are going to be great to spin and to try out new techniques. And, you know, it might not be my first choice, but Sometimes you kind of have to just jump in and try something. I wasn't sure if these colors would work together and I tried it out and I was half successful. <laughs> the next set of Rolags that I blended this weekend are from, the wool is from Paradise Fibers and I actually uh, dyed it this really pretty blue color. It is kind of a royal blue or like an ultramarine blue. It's actually quite vivid in real life. And this is, so the main portion of these Rolags are Romney. It was an undyed Romney included in one of my month's boxes. And I added, I'm trying to find a really good example for you guys. I put a beautiful jade green bamboo top and then I also used and I don't know if you can see just the little lighter blue nubs here it's just a really pretty kind of a peacock blue or um yeah I guess just a kind of a lighter maybe a turquoise color of the recycled sari silk top so these are really fun. They're very soft from the bamboo. And one of my oldest daughter was just crazy about this color. So I made 50 grams worth of these Rolags. So hopefully they will become something really fun in the future and I will make something for her since she loved the color so much. But I'll tell you, you know, the last, I think it was the last month, what was last month? February and um, some of the fibers that were included in the box were this bamboo top and it was so fun to feel and to work with um, it was really really enjoyable because it's so soft so i will definitely be using that top in other projects because it was really fun i've also placed an order from a shop for some more angelina fiber I think it's Angelina. It's the sparkle that you use for blending. So one thing I've thought about um, some of the natural fibers that I have, some of the undyed fibers, um, instead of over dyeing it like this, which I thought this was, I do think it's really pretty, but I would have loved to put some sparkle in to this. This would have made it just shimmer and would have added more texture. I think this would have been really pretty. So 
Um, I do have some more brown fibers. I actually have, oh gosh, I think maybe two ounces of an undyed fiber. And then I also have, and that's more of like a chocolate brown color. And then I have some really pretty silk top that is a kind of a mushroomy, warm gray color. And I purchased maybe six different colors of Angelina. So I think I'm going to be doing something maybe with some neutral colors, browns, grays, and then maybe throw some sari silk into it, maybe throw some Angelina into it and just keep it really neutral and try it out because um, just stretch myself a little bit. I, you know, one of the things that's so fun when your resources are limited or you have some kind of boundaries around your crafting is that you have to get really creative to use the things you have or um, you know use the things that you can acquire within maybe a budgetary constraint something like that and for me I know it really pushes my creativity to um, maybe outside of my comfort zone so I think it's really great having the fiber of the month club boxes because a lot of the fiber I would just not I don't I am not gravitated towards I don't really care for natural colored fibers <laughs> I'm just I'm just being honest um, the browns the grays not really my thing uh, so I'm trying to find creative ways to use them and yeah we'll just see what happens what happens in the future and how I can use those up but other than that, that is all I've been working on this week. I plan to finish my striped socks, keep working on my lunay shawl, uh, maybe, fingers crossed, finish the spinning project, and I'll probably cast on another pair of socks too. <laughs> my, uh, my next daughter in line is kind of going crazy about me knitting her some socks. She loves hand knit socks they all do to some extent but she's just so funny um she knows I love to browse for yarn look for yarn dyers on Instagram or browse yarn on Etsy and so when it's her turn to uh have hand knit socks she always wants to go yarn shopping with me which I don't always I don't always buy her yarn for her socks a lot of times I just use something I have or something I've dyed, but she knows that I really like to window shop, I guess, for yarn, and so it's just, she's just so funny. But uh, yeah, that's all I have this week. If you like the podcast, I would love if you would click like and subscribe to the podcast. It just pushes the podcast out so more knitters and spinners like us can share in our podcast, but I hope you guys have a really great week and I hope you're staying warm wherever you are. If you are somewhere warm, please send some warm air up to me. <laughs> I would really appreciate it. <laughs> but until next time, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.